Hello everyone, welcome back to Game Dev Night. Today is episode 12 of our YouTube platformer series and today we're going to make some health bars and introduce some animations for taking damage. Now to get started you're going to make a new scene, a user interface scene, and in here you're going to type in health bar like so. You're just going to add a child node and just type in color rect, pop up like so. And to get the appropriate size, you can use a reference by just dragging whichever character you have and just see how big you want to make it. But we are specifically just going to make it a certain size. So in the layout, transform, you can go down here and type in 24 by 4. And that's how big I want my health bar. And when you're done, you can just delete your reference you made like so. And to get the color we need, we can just drag in the heart from a previous episode, click on our color rect, scroll up, click on the color, click on the sample tool and just click on the red. And now we have our color. Now we can delete this heart and we can save the scene. Just control S, scenes, UI, and save it here. If you don't have a UI folder for your scenes, just make one. There we go. And then we can attach a script, top left, select the folder we need. So scripts, UI, and in here we will save it as health bar and done. Now we can get into some scripting. Now the first thing we'll need to do is declare how big this health bar can be. And we find that by going onto our color rect and we have the 24 over there. So that's how wide the health bar can be. So what we'll do is on ready var full max is equal to the color rect. So just drag it in dot size dot x. And that is 24. And on a new line, we have var full amount, which is the current full amount, which is a float. Cool. And now we just need a function, function, update, health bar. And we will pass health and max health. So this is how big the health should be. I mean, the health bar should be, sorry. And then we will take the full amount and we will say it is float the health divided by the max health times the full max. And then we're going to take the color rect again, drag it in, dot size dot x equals the full amount. Cool. Now let's go over what this little summons we made. Let's use an example. Let's say something has three health. It just took one damage, so it has two health. So we're going to do two divided by three is equal to what? 0 0.66. And that's why we have to convert the health to a float is because it goes into a decimal value. And we will take that and we will times it with the full max, which is 24. And that equals 18. So if we go into 2D and we click on our color rect and we go into 24 and we change it to 18, you can see the health bar gets smaller. So there is our health bar done. If you want to keep this comment just to know the logic, there you have it, but I'm not going to keep it there. Now we can go onto our cannon. We can scroll down and find that folder we made. UI, health bar, drag it in like so. And then, oh, I forgot to make one change and that is we go into the health bar and position this color rect into the center, like so. So it lines up right there with the lines. So now it is actually appropriately in the middle if we move it up like so, as you can see, it's in the middle. I'm gonna put my three pixels above my actual sprite of the cannon. I'm gonna go into the cannon script. I'm gonna scroll down to take damage. And in here, I will just do get node health bar dot update health bar. And I will pass the health of the cannon and the max health of the cannon. And we're going to copy that. So just take like so, control C, save. And we're going to go into our saber tooth. And in here, we will drag in the health bar again, like so. And we'll take this health bar, move them up, go into our saber tooth script, and in the take damage function, exact same thing. Now, if you haven't been following along with this series, or you're just using this to learn about making health bars, uh, we just have a health and max health, which is just two numbers, and that is all that is. So whatever system you have, this health bar should just work for you just fine. And now let's test it out. Let's go into level one. I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to go hit the enemy. Oh, our enemies only have one health. Sorry about that. Uh, let's go into the saber tooth. Let's make him have two health. Like so. Hit play. And now that value should be updated. And there you go. So it works. So the enemy only has half health. And I'm like, so he's dead. And now let's go test on the cannon. Make sure it all works. And as you can see, the health works appropriately. So that's the health bar is done. That is a big step in a good direction. Now, if you don't want health bars in your game, because this is just a simple platformer and um, <laughs> health bars are a little bit more like Metroidvania style, you don't have to use them. I was just doing this so you guys have it if you want it. 
Now let's get on to updating our player and our enemy to have a take damage animation. So we'll click on animation player for our player. And we're going to click animation, make a new animation, and just call it hit. Cool. And then here we're going to add a property track for the sprite, like so, and the texture. I'll scroll up, and we have this full frame animation, so it's 0 0.3 seconds long. And we will add all these appropriate tracks, same as before, just right clicking and adding them. Drag in all these sprites we need to the appropriate keyframes. There we go. I think that's all of them. Set play. Nice, looks good. And now we'll click on our player and go into his script. And in here, we're going to need a new variable. So we'll have a export var hit, which will be false by default. And we will go to the process over here, and we will say with the if you try to attack, you will go and not hit. So exclamation mark not hit. So we can't attack while we're getting hit because that would look a little bit weird. And then down here in the update animation over here, it should be if attacking and not hit. So you can't update the other animations like the runner idle stuff if the player is in the hit animation. Cool. And now we'll scroll down to the uh, take damage function over here. I'm going to set hit to true because he just took damage. And we're going to set attacking to false. So if the player was in the middle of his attacking animation, it will take him out of it. And then we're going to do uh, false. And then we're going to do animation.play. And we called it hit. There it is. Cool. I think that's everything done for the player. Let's go test that. Oh, wait, no, sorry, we have one more thing to do. Any player's animation over here, the hit animation we made, we'll add another track, property track, and we will click on the player and his hit boolean we made. And at the very end, we will insert key and make sure the value is uh, not ticked. So it'll set it back to false. Now, let's see if this works. I think that is all we need. I might be missing something. Okay, cool. So yeah, I take damage. I could still hit enemies and everything works. So we just made a little taking damage animation, which I think looks perfectly fine. And if we, di if we die, everything still just updates perfectly fine. See how it looks if Spike hits me. And yeah, so there we go. That's the hit animation for the player done. And now we can just make it for the Sabertooth. Sabertooth is going to be a little bit more complicated because we have a simple little AI for it. Uh, so it needs a little bit more functionality implemented, but it'll essentially be the same process. So we'll go on our animation player. And here we're going to make a new animation. Call that hit as well. And we'll scroll up and the hit animations over here. And it is also four frames long, so 0 0.3 seconds long. Add property track, Sprite 2D texture and then here we will insert key insert key insert key and a million times it's the best way to do things in life and we will drag in all these little sprites we made like so cool there we go we hit play and see how it looks looks pretty damn good and now we can go into the script on the saber tooth and get to coding so in here it's going to get a little bit tricky but not too bad we'll need a var current speed like so, and we'll just set it to zero by zero by default, just so it is declared. And then we're gonna actually, I'm gonna change my max health back to one just while I'm at it, because I, I don't want it so big. And then we'll need two more variables. We'll need a var hit, which will be equal to false by default. So that is if the enemy takes damage. And then we'll need a var can attack. So can it attack the player? Because we don't want the enemy to attack the player while he's in his taking damage animation, because that'd look a little bit weird. Cool, that's all we needed to do. And now we can scroll down into our ready function and we can change something in here. We will need to, sorry, no, not the uh, ready function. We'll need to scroll down to our flip function. Oh, sorry, again, <laughs> I keep selecting the wrong functions. We'll scroll down to the on area entered and in here and like so and not hit. Uh, sorry, no, and can attack like so. Oh, I misspelled can, so it's n like so. Scroll up and fix this typo. There we go. And cool. So what we're just doing is if the player enters the enemy's body, he can only attack the player if he actually can attack. Because again, it would be a little bit weird if your enemy's in his like taking damage animation and he just hits the player anyway. And in here we'll add some functionality for our take damage. We're gonna take the whole thing, just hit control X, and we will do if exclamation mark not dead. So what we're just doing, and then click on these lines and just hit tab. 
till they're all in line like so. So what we're just doing is we're checking that the enemy can't damage the player while he's dead, because of course that would be very annoying <laughs> if you kill an enemy and walk into him and it just damages you anyway. And then at the start of this, when we take damage, we're going to go dollar sign animation player dot play. Sorry, not two dots. Dot play and hit. And the other thing for having this check for uh, seeing if the enemy is dead is so you won't just play the hit animation again if he's already dead, because again, that would be wrong. And now we need another function over here, have our die, function hit, like so. And what this is going to do is say hit equals not hit, so it'll just flip the hit being true or false. Uh, oh, sorry, not this. Oh, there we go, get hit like so. And then what we're going to do is if hit, then the current speed is equal to speed. Let me just uh, scroll down so you guys can see better. And then we're going to do speed equals zero, like so. And can attack equals false. So if the enemy is hit after, well, this function gets called, it will set everything appropriately to how it should be. And then if the enemy is not hit anymore, so if exclamation mark, uh, but you can also just do else, like so. Else, the speed is equal to the current speed, so we just flip it around. And then we're going to do can attack equals true. And dollar sign animation player dot play run. Cool. So I know that's a lot of logic. We did a lot of things here, but it is necessary. Uh, so let's just run over what this function does again. It is just setting hit to the opposite of what it is right now. So if hit is true, it'll be false. If it's false, it'll be true. And if hit is true, it's going to set the speed to whatever speed the enemy has right now, whether that's negative 60 or 60. And then it's going to set the actual speed to zero, so the enemy stands still. And he'll set can attack to false. So the enemy can't attack the player, he's standing still, and he's playing his animation. Else, speed equals current speed, can attack equals true, and he plays his running animation again. So what we have to do here is going into our animation, add a track, a call method, click on a saber tooth like so, and at the very start of the animation, we'll right click, insert key, and we will call the get hit right there. And at the very end, insert another key, and we will call get hit again. So we're calling that animation twice in this, I mean, we're calling that function twice in this animation. And I, again, think that's everything. I'm not 100% sure, but we're going to press play and find out if that is everything done. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna hit this enemy. And well, first of all, I forgot I changed the health back to one, so they just die instantly. <laughs> Let me give them two health again. Uh, sorry about that, and let's hit play. Here we go. Let's go hit this enemy. And as you can see, he plays his getting hit animation. Now let's make sure it works when the enemy is facing the other way. I'm so bad at this game. Um, we have to make sure he's facing the other way, so yep, seems everything still works. And if you really want to make sure everything works, you're worried there's something broken, we can give the enemy like five health, press play again, and we can go in and hit him multiple times. And as you can see, I hit him three times there and everything still works perfectly fine. So yeah, there we go. The enemy and the player now has taking damage animations. We have health bars and everything is good. Now, sorry for this video taking so long to come out, even if it seems pretty simple. It took me a while to figure out some of these systems getting them perfectly right because we are not using a animation tree for our animations and such. So we have all these if checks and bullions and stuff so it's pretty hard getting the code working how it should but i hope you guys enjoyed i hope this is what you guys wanted for your game um if there's any other animations you guys might need for your enemies uh, maybe you want them to actually have an attack animation or something but it would look a little bit weird but if you guys want that i can implement that as well in a future video and as always thank you guys so much for the support i really appreciate it and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye